Hi, I'm Keith McCullough. Welcome to our new studio here in Stanford, Connecticut. I'm here with the senior partner at the firm, Daryl Jones, who also runs our global macro business. We're going to talk about this government shutdown. So first, I want to get something off my chest. The fear-mongering that's going on here in the manic media is driving me nuts because the reality is there's a lot of things here that are completely politically driven. So first, what I want to do is take that for what it's worth, which is not a lot, and take a step back and do what we always do here, which is go through the context of the matter, what the market thinks, which is probably the most important point, and then finally provide some fundament fundamental overlay to the entire ordeal. So first, uh, Daryl, I want to go through just that. The timing, the history of it all, where are we relative to where, where we've been before? You're exactly right. The history here is very important. You know, government shutdowns have happened many times in the past. Since 1976, there have been, I think, eight, this is the 18th government shutdown. Tip O'Neill shut down the government with Ronald Reagan 12 times. You know, the last one was 95, 96 with uh, Clinton and Gingrich. So this is kind of a new thing, but it's also part of a modern democracy. This is a political tactic that has been used, is being used now. And the fact of the matter is, Oh, more than 80% of the government's still running, so it's more of a headline fear than, than a practical fear. Yeah, it's an interesting one, and it's being perpetuated by both sides. I mean, we had a, a very good call with Speaker Gingrich last week with some of our clients, and I said to him, I said, well, you know, did you hear what Jack Lew just said? He said that there's default risk in the country, and, and Gingrich himself said, yeah, that's just dumb. And the reality is right. that up until that point, Boehner hadn't said anything dumb, and then this weekend, all I heard of him say were dumb things in that regard, raising this antenna of like a debt default. If you look at what's going on in the marketplace, is there anything that says that the U.S. is going to default? Well, the biggest thing for us, uh, uh, the biggest lead, leading indicator for debt defaults is credit default swaps. And you know, the credit default swaps on U.S. Treasuries, and you know, in particular, we looked at the five-year Treasury, you know, is, is heightened a little bit over the last couple of weeks, but nothing, nothing off the charts. I think right now it's at 41 basis points. That's so low. It, you know, it's you know, low versus the last yeah. three years. It's low versus any comparable, but. You know, the fact of the matter is, it's, what it's signaling to us is that there's no real risk in, in, the, in the U.S. defaulting. It's interesting. I mean, we, we call it the Lehman line. Uh, Lehman line being credit default risk. So again, 300 basis points or higher. And what Daryl just said is that it's 41 basis points, which is nothing. Uh, if you cross 300, okay, now we've got some credit risk. We could have it with a company. We could have it with a, with a country, for that matter. We don't have that right now. We don't have it in the bond market either. I mean, the bond market, like, literally didn't move last week. Yeah, you know, you're exactly right. Once again, you know, the, the politicians are fear-mongering, you know, the, the manic media is fear-mongering, but the reality of the bond market is, is that the bond market looks at fundamentals. And the biggest right. fundamental for U.S. Treasuries right now is the fact that the, the, the deficit has narrowed meaningfully over the last three years. It's gone from about three years ago to 10% 10, 10 GDP, or sorry, 10% deficit to GDP to uh, just under 4% deficit to GDP. And if you're somebody that's analyzing U.S. Treasuries, that to use a signal that we're actually getting more credit worthy, not less credit worthy. Right. The credit metrics of the country. And I mean, and we, you know, and all of our clients would know this. In 2010, when the U.S. deficit was running 10 percent deficit GDP, I mean, Reinhardt and Rogoff would go back hundreds of yeah. years and say, OK, look, now you have a problem. Anything north of 9 percent deficit to GDP. But we're running at half of that. Right. So does that provide these people with the audacity to do what they're doing, which is scare the hell out of people for no reason, for only political gain, because they really know damn well that they don't have a problem. Well, the best thing for the Tea Party and Republicans is to go back to their constituents in the midterm elections and say, we took all these actions, we shut down the government, we, we did this, we did that, and here's the result. We've narrowed the deficit dramatically. And you know, I think that's what they're trying to do here. I think they'll, punt, they'll probably get some changes to the Affordable Care Act, Obamacare, as it's more popularly known. But the reality of what they're trying to do is they're trying to implement more tax reform, trying to implement more spending cuts. And then in a year from now, the Republicans and the Tea Party can go back and say, we did our job. We narrowed the deficit. And that's what the facts are telling us. Wow. So you kind of go through the paces on this. If we're only six days in, and this is typically the average, it could go 12 days, could go 18 days. Would you expect this to end in like the end of the world? It's not going to end in the end of the world. <laughs> I, you know, I think it could be you know, protracted a couple weeks. Yeah. It's not going to hurt the economy terribly. And I think at the end of the day, there's going to be a negotiation. Negotiation is probably going to lead to some, uh, you know, increased, you know, spending cuts and probably some more tax reform. And probably Obama gets what he wants on the Affordable Care Act as well. Well, I think that's the perverse reality here. And, and at the end of the day, that's, again, what gets a bee in my bonnet. These politicians are going to do whatever they need to do to get paid. And the reality is that includes scaring you. Uh, and that is sad. It's really sad. And I think that if you think this through in full, the bond market doesn't agree with the fear-mongering that we could default. 
CDS doesn't believe it. And even the U.S. stock market this morning, it was, it was down on the open, but it recovered. You know, we could go down for a lot of reasons, and that's one of the reasons why we're out of the way, because we think that the government could actually slow growth. Now, that's a much bigger issue than debt default. Debt default is what gets people's ears ringing, but the reality is it should be ringing almost on, on, on tone-deaf mute to at this point. Uh, so again, don't freak out. Don't freak out about the default risk. You can freak out about anything else you want to in life, but that's not one of the things that we would have you freaking out about. And that's that. So if you have any questions, uh, you, can, you can hit me on my Twitter handle, which is at Keith McCullough, or you can hit uh, Daryl Jones, at DJ is his Twitter handle. Any questions, compliments, or concerns, we'd be happy to hear from you. Thanks.